I'm gonna fill up my glass, and uh, we're gonna be ready. So let's just start like when I'm, yeah. when I'm away, let's start it like this. <laughs> so just and like last week, just like last week, Julian decides to get off his ass just as I hit record. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, the joys of you know doing working with a French guy. <laughs> yeah, or, or you know doing podcasts across you know vast masses of ocean. But you know that it is what it is. Um, First of all, it's a catch up. So, how was your week? It was great. But before, let's do some housekeeping before we start. So, last week we had a good number of listeners. We had a commenter from, I think, Abu Dhabi. <laughs> and um, he. he yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, if you like it, let your friends know. If you don't, tell us you don't like it. That's okay, too, because we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. But uh, no, Eric is not gay. Even though the lighting suggests otherwise. <laughs> it's the mood lighting for the um, for the parties. So later. what was the comment? Did you read the comment? Or did I actually tried to look it up. I couldn't find it. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, I actually don't know what it said. It was in another well, language. Know. Oh, try to Google Translate then. Yeah, I did. And it said it was, it was some sort of like Middle Eastern language. That's as far as I got with it. Yeah, but I didn't translate anything. Uh, I did. I just can't remember. Okay. All that aside, welcome to this week. <laughs> and there's a lot to talk about coming off the heels of last week where we had about half an hour talking about Hulkenberg. Give and he's second. back. Well, sorry for a second. I need to take care of my son. So you go ahead. How was All your right. week? My week was fantastic. Um, and by fantastic, I mean it was an incredibly busy week where I had a lot to do. And by the time, and lucky yesterday was a public holiday in, in Indonesia. So for me, um, I had you know, a day to do nothing, um, which was very much needed because I'd had long days. But the other good thing is I actually got a new gaming laptop. Um, so I, my uh, ROG G15 actually arrived which keeps me very, very happy. I've been sort of religiously gaming on it. And I've been playing uh, Rust and DayZ and Civ 6, which I actually play on the Nintendo Switch. But, um, you know, I have more expansion packs on the on the uh, Windows laptop. So I'm pretty, pretty chuffed about that. Um, is Julian actually listening to this? I'm not entirely sure. No. I'm staring at a blank screen. Uh, but... <laughs> but you know i'm listening but are. my my son is just uh, trying to watch something on tv he's asking me to find it he should find it by himself okay. okay well we can switch to eric cam so now this is purely eric cam um yeah so i'm really happy with uh you know the new the new laptop you know I'm yeah pretty, pretty so what is this new laptop a little bit uh, tell us about the specs i want to know the details i want to know uh, what it smells like and what it tastes like everything well I usually it, because it's like a sandwich i mean it depends if you want peanut butter or jam in it i mean that's that's that <laughs> but i mean there's probably no going back from that one if that happens but you know it's um as far as specs are well concerned, you've been in a sandwich you used to be the ham so let us know how it, go, how it went so <laughs> well, <laughs> it's good to be the bread this time <laughs> but um no it's great it's uh it's got a ryzen 9 4000 series processor in it so 12 oh, so you went it's amd yeah so it's i think 16 core 16 well eight core 16 threads um, and an RTX 2060 Max Q. So it's wow. a, it's a um, the Max Q series is is it uses a lower TDP, which is lower power. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but you know it's it's got RTX technology in it, which means I can actually do like live streaming from the laptop, um, and it'll encode on the graphics card rather than yeah. the here. And that's the thing, you know, like uh, you know that I really want to set up. Um, I'm I'm just uh, taking my time to set up my my you know my gaming rig like the driving rig or whatever they call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, with the wheel and the chair and everything, I, I've pretty much you know uh, zeroed down on everything that all the elements as I want of the rig itself, mm. so the chassis, the seat, you know, and and the wheel. Um, you know, keeping in mind that 
I'm going to get whatever I can get here because I don't want good to go and import and pay the, all the 30, 35% taxes and all of that mm. um, and not have the support in case something fails. So I'm just going to go with what's available locally. Um, but really what I want to do is well, where I need help is on, okay, how do, should I build the PC? You know, what the specs should be um, knowing that I want to run VR. Yeah. So I'm also waiting because I think VR, from what I understand, is not completely there yet hmm. uh, in terms of resolution. So yeah, how long should I wait? When can I have a good experience? You know, I'm also a little bit worried about the fact that um, that the refresh rates or whatever it is makes uh, people a bit sick when you play it too long because I really uh, want to play it for at least an hour or two or whatever. Uh, so you, You'll be able to get, a, get around it now. A lot of There's been a lot of work on VR at the moment. So um, the big thing, one of the big things I actually found is like, you know, the left and the right eye, if you close one, you can actually see your nose. But when you have them both open, your nose disappears. Oh, yeah. So what they actually did is they... They've, they've put in the nose and your brain automatically blanks it out. So it, it's actually lowered the amount of like motion sickness you get. So people can actually play it for a lot longer now than what they used to be able to, um, which which has actually really improved it. So if you're saying an hour, and you, you could have got it away with an hour before, um, but now you, you'll easily be able to get away with it. I, I yeah, the, the other thing is that worries me a little bit. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the, the the fact that uh, my eyesight is different from one eye to the other is that going to be a problem? Um, you got near vision problems or far vision problems? Uh, man, I, I don't know. <laughs> can you see? <laughs> can you see distance or not? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's it's um. Yeah, near vision. So yeah, yeah. I, I need glasses these days, man. Yeah. So basically, um, you you be able, you can you can tune it. You'll be able to tune it. Forty two, man. Forty two. I don't know what that means. I've been blind I'm, since I've been I'm born. I'm forty two. I... I'm forty two years old. Is what I mean. You know, like uh, at some stage after your forties, that's when the eyesight starts to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Get to shit. Fair enough. Um, yeah. yeah. I've I've had eye vision problems since I've been like young, and I still don't know what my whatever is. So uh, re the, try to remember the colors now then, because when you hit 40, it's going to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, noted. But it seems, yeah, anyway, we won't go there. But, you know, <laughs> that, keeping it, keeping it, oh, actually, before we go on to cars, I mean, I guess it's kind of related. We're talking about VR racing, but. Yeah, it, it is very related. I mean, you know, you like know, uh, with, with the pandemic and everything, like uh, we, we saw the, you know, the explosion of events around e-racing and you know in nascar and formula one and mm. wec you know like it, it was it was great so it is very related to cars yeah yeah I, i'm looking forward to um i'm looking forward to actually setting up a rig here it, it's actually not too bad because with this i mean the vr you don't actually need a lot to run vr from what i can tell um basically you've got different levels and i think you know something like this will be able to run vr pretty well mm. it's got enough processing power and 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 graphics card power as as well and enough ram so it should be all right and even the budget the budget builds i think about three episodes back at the very first one we spoke about vr even the budget builds are running like a 1660 ti something like that was enough to actually run a um a, a vr rig um so I yeah. mean, that, that's fine which um, in thailand you know that kind of rig with 1660 cost about three thousand four thousand dollars no i don't think it will usd no no in thailand it's, it's crazy the prices are crazy hmm. a 20 i don't i don't think that i can afford buying a 2080 um buy, buy it here yeah that's uh, a <laughs> travel how do i travel and then even if you buy it there and you send it to me, the the, the customs here are just gonna. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I could it, when when things reopen again, I could probably just stick one in my suitcase and then we'll. Stick yeah, it. which is the best way to do things. Because I mean, even here they are mm -hmm. a little bit more expensive, but like a twenty eighty, you can get for eight hundred bucks, you know. And you're probably gonna be able to get the two hundred the twenty series actually a lot cheaper because they're gonna release the three thousand series really soon. So. Yeah, no, I mean, if I buy it anywhere, I would either buy it. You know, through my parents in Hong Kong, either in Japan, Hong Kong, or or in Singapore, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, they. I would get a fairer price, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's that makes sense. 
But uh, as I said at the very beginning of the podcast, we've been we've been rattling on for almost ten minutes now. But you know, we we spent a long time talking about Hulkenberg, you know, sort of being at the wrong place, the right place at the wrong time, and um, he's back. And now he's in the wrong place at the right time. No, wait. Oh come on, Racing Point's doing all right. What last time? I think was it Lance Stroll topped free practice too. Yeah, yeah, because because Mercedes was uh, sandbagging, sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's right. But yeah, I mean, Hulkenberg was straight away top 10 in, in free. I mean, it's free practice. It doesn't say much, but it says a lot for somebody that was probably eating baguettes on, on Wednesday. And by Friday... No, no, he no. He kept really fit, apparently. So mm. yeah, no, he was, uh, you know, very careful about what he was doing. I guess, you know, this is the opportunity of a lifetime for him. So let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm still, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm still... I'm still in the camp where I think Hulkenberg is is a fantastic driver. Yeah, there's no doubt denying you know his talent and and all of that. But um, the thing is, for me, the hype is has been killed by the number of mistakes he's done when he had something in hand. Um, yeah, and and it really coming from him. Like like I'm not talking about when you know when he had a, a, a mechanical failure or something like this. I'm talking really like when he lost it. You know, in Germany last year. Where he 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 really was like really aiming for a podium or at least a top five finish, um, but actually it really looked like a podium, you know. And he he fumbled it at the yeah. last, um, you know. So okay, at that basically what I'm saying is that I'd, I'd love to be proven wrong this weekend. Yeah, I mean I have high hopes, but then again I have high hopes for him and Vettel. But um, you know. Yeah, so what, what what happened with the Ferraris in um? What are the results for FP two? Well, uh, Vettel was uh, was uh, I don't remember actually because uh, Vettel Just, missed missed FP one. I think yeah, he did quite well in uh, FP two. Because he had a um he had a um what was it a, a problem with an intercooler and they had to intercooler in FP one. Yeah, he could not uh, he could not really lap. And they had anything. to strip the whole engine. I think I think that was it. Yeah, it? yeah. That intercooler is like really deep inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Free practice too. All right, let's have a look at the results. Maybe I should share this on screen. Talking about deep inside, how's your mom? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful man. Beautiful. I was just looking for a joke. It just took me a couple seconds there. Sorry. I know. <laughs> and then it, you know, once it's there, you know, like you have to, you know, it has to come out because otherwise. Yeah. Uh, we can't see anything, man. Put it uh, full screen. The viewers can. I just need to actually change it on your end. Oh, okay. No, then don't change it on my end. Um, I've got the website. Okay, thank you. Change it on my end. All right. So, what did we get? Well, here's the top 14. Or, yeah, top 13. So, Lance Stroll, number one. Alexander Albon, two. Hmm. Yeah, and he crashed pretty hard. Um, yeah. He do so. Yeah. Leclerc for. And then and then they, they, they changed they they race they, they changed his race engineer actually uh, Albon as if it was gonna make a difference. I'm I'm not sure why. Yeah, I'm not sure, but Hulkenberg seven. But yeah, is that is that better than is that better than Perez? I mean, he's got COVID now, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like I mean, like obviously, you know, obviously two things actually. Obviously two things. Um, but it's a bit tough. I mean, he, the guy should have. I mean, especially in this t at this time where his seat is not really completely secured, is it? No. Um, the guy, okay, apparently his mother had some kind of an accident or something like this, so he went to Mexico. Yeah. Um, but then he was seen also uh, after Mexico on the coast of uh, Italy, you know, kind of uh, greeting the fans and everything and not really maybe observing the social distancing and all of that. Mm. I mean, you know, I mean, as good as he is and talented as he is, um, it, it, that doesn't really show much control or focus about what you need to be doing, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Again, you know, going to Mexico to see his mom and she had an accident, I mean, fully understand, and nobody knows where he actually caught 
that the, the virus, right? But just just that compounded effect of you know doing this and meeting fans and blah blah blah. It's just man, um, you're running a championship. It's the shortest championship ever. You've got one of the best cars on the grid. Uh, a lot of people agree that it's the second fastest car on the grid. Actually, it's uh, it's really funny. I mean, how they... You've got all of this going for you, and and you you. You know, okay, okay, again, going to Mexico to see his mom if she had an accident. I, I, I don't know. I don't know all the facts, right? I'm just reading the press, and maybe they're wrong. So I, I, I didn't verify the sources or anything. But the thing is, going there to to do that, okay, why not? But then also, you know, going to Italy after that and spending the time on the coast and meeting fans and all of that, you know, when they greet you at the restaurant, that's not necessary. I mean, you, you know, you have a championship going. It's the shortest ever. You have one of the fastest cars. That's the best result you can get. And yet, you know, you get distracted by those things or you let yourself being distracted by those things. I, I, for me, I'm sorry to say, but it's, it's a lack of professionalism. Yeah, I mean, it you is. You but... again, sorry to interrupt and continue on and rent on, but Alkenberg. He's not even in F1, but the guy was keeping fit and keeping, you know, all of this going because the first occasion that he can get, he'll jump back in. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to. I mean, I think you know. Do you think Perez and Hulkenberg are pretty similar, pace-wise? I think because when I, when I'm looking at the FP1, sorry, FP2, we're just the results so far. Is you know was he any different? I mean, I suppose we can actually look at the previous races and see where Perez was landing. I think I think Perez is not necessarily doesn't doesn't show his pace so much. I mean, he, his quality is really race craft. It's unbelievable. Mm. It, it, that that's where he is. Um, I I don't think that he particularly shines in uh, qualifying. Um, Unless he really has, you know, something that is that's that that's really to his taste. But I think where he really, really shines is is like um, during the race. Perez. So Perez, yeah. So I, I I don't think that we can uh, really judge from the FP1, FP2. I mean, generally, um, since Stroll, Lance Stroll uh, joined, um, he's been fa- Perez has been faster. Yeah. All the time, uh, consistently. Lately, yeah. Uh, I mean, this season, yeah, Stroll has been showing. Maybe it's the pressure, um, you know, from Papa. Yeah. Um, or yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. Like uh, maybe of uh, the potentially, you know, reading the press and saying that if there's anyone who should lose their seats at um at race point, it should be uh it should be Stroll rather than Perez. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, but it's it's really shown like the last. I would say Hungary, uh, and um, two weeks ago, and 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 then here is really showing. Stroll is really showing form. Yeah, um, I mean, this is Hungary. He finished fourth. Perez was fifth. Um, and there's n- realistically uh, a second in it, you know. So I mean, a second is a pretty big difference. But so it, it, who knows? I mean, I'm sure they're both fighting for for the seat. Um, but yeah, you know, it's. Um... But is it is it also maybe that Perez is like okay, you know, he said it himself, you know, um, I have a son, I wouldn't fire my son. Um, he did comment on this, right? So, yeah. uh, is there like some kind of you know maybe the the um, yeah the, 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 the in his mind maybe it's already gone or something like this. I don't know. But anyway, coming back to this. He could have done better in dealing with with that situation and 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 being a little bit more confined. Um, again, especially at this time, we see it's, it's 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 you know it's flaring up in many countries. The guy should have just been more careful. I mean, you know, you're at the top twenty drivers in the world for this kind of category, right? Um, mm. You don't risk anything. Your whole life is is geared towards this, right? So, yeah, that's that's my point. That's just it's it for me. It really shows a lack of professionalism. As much as I like Perez, as much as I love to see how he races and 
and you know he's one of those guys for me like who's out there with the the knife between his teeth every time he starts a race to 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 to, to get better uh, he's got grit right and um and i i really admire that uh, that quality but again i think seriously this was quite disappointing for me again i'm not blaming someone who gets the covid it, it's not about this anybody can get it but when when you have everything in place to kind of isolate you and and you don't take advantage of this which those drivers have they have that confined and possible for them <sighs> come on yeah yeah i hear you yeah. i mean i might get infected tomorrow and you know i'll be like yeah my fault but um yeah again i'm not blaming anybody it's just it's just in that way that yeah he could have tried to uh, tackle things a little bit differently um, in view and, and, and keeping in view and keeping in focus the championship. I got it wrong, sorry. I was looking at the FP2 results for Hungary. So Stroll actually finished fourth and Perez yeah. finished seventh. Okay, seventh, okay. So there's quite a big difference there. And Vettel finished sixth. And Leclerc finished eleventh. Yeah, but you have to look at the um, you have to look at the the race. You have to look at the events during the race. You have to look at the penalties. You have to look at yeah. Let's look. You know, the strategy plays a big, big role in in F1. Mm. Um, in terms of when do you do the uh, the over or undercuts, and um, you know, when you come out back on the field, did the team make the right decision to get you back out on the field? Do you have to overtake? Can you overtake? Depending, it's just such a complicated sport. Because um, we we always seem to you know focus on on the very apex, you know, like the very best, the uh, one two um, seats, and we we focus on that on uh, during the race. But um, actually, the midfield action is 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 a lot more exciting. I find it exciting because it's totally different to the to the front. I mean, you find even in the last race, they were not even like you didn't see Hamilton at all on screen. Yeah, it's, nobody and I love that. Nobody's interested, and in, well, that that's that's a lie. Um, people are interested, but at the same time, it's sort of like what's there to watch, you know? You, the second of the ha- second half of the race where he's going through traffic, like who cares, you know? Yeah, but um, yes. But you know, I, I I quite enjoyed that sort of midfield fighting, and it's the same thing with World Endurance Championship. I really like that midfield fighting that they show. And that is that is Formula One. That's yeah. that's that's for me. That's why I love to watch it. And and the thing is, yeah, the thing is, it's it might not be very well broadcasted um, mm. when 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 you know they they just focus on. You know, number one, number two, who was who are like I don't know, thirty seconds or forty seconds ahead, and then you know, like they have a pit stop, they have more than a pit stop ahead, right? So, what did you do from there? Yeah. You know. Um, so speaking of yeah. speaking of pit stops, so I mean, going back to looking at Leclerc's P11 finish, I mean, I mean, he was there because he was just he demanded new tires and didn't wait it out. He he really he was like, nah, these tires are gone. Got it. I must have new tires. And then as a result, you saw where he ended up. Like it's he's eleventh because they go, well, you're going to lose too much time with another pit stop, you know. So, yeah, but you know, everybody agrees to say that um, you know what Vettel did to bring it into a sixth position is 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 actually not where the car belongs. <laughs> the car belongs more in the eleventh place. Um, again, you know. Um, I, I I think it's 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 Charles Leclerc's third season yeah. in Formula One, right? So is it third or fourth season? Whichever it, he's very young on that side, and we cannot expect him to have the same uh, racecraft in terms of strategy as as somebody like Vettel, who is a four-time world champion. Mm. Um, so this is where. You know, when you have a weak car like this, this is where experience probably shines. Um, so I, I wouldn't read too much into this. Um, what uh, what I'm really looking at right now is, um, and, and okay, being French, I guess, uh, but Ocon, Ocon, you know, getting a grip of of the Renault and um, and getting closer to uh, to Ricardo. Um, 
um, who, who Ricardo is, uh, of course, uh, an exceptional driver. I think, uh, you know, his, uh, his value hasn't, you know, changed too, too much. Uh, he might have to pay the price a little bit with the uh, lack of uh, commitment. Uh, by going to a team for just a year and then leaving it. Uh, but uh, I think he's an exceptional driver. Um, mm. So this is something I'm, I'm happy to, to, to see. Um, I want, you know, living in Thailand and being or feeling, you know, a bit, a bit Thai as well. Uh, I want Alex Albon to do well. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, I'm also looking at Gasly, who is really bringing that Alpha Tauri to somewhere it shouldn't be <laughs> in many ways. Um, yeah, so I mean, he, just, yeah. well, but the problem is like he, where did he finish last time? Uh, I think he was in the top 10 uh, last time. No, no, he didn't finish DNF. Oh no, DNF, DNF in Hungary. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's in the double header. He had a, uh, he had a good finish on the second race. Yeah. Kvyat. Uh, in, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Kvyat, Kvyat, or whatever. Kvyat, yeah. <laughs> um, he, um, he finished the 12th, I think. Let me check. Hungary, yeah, twelfth at Hungary. So, you know, but like you said, that um, that racing point. I, I'm really this. There's, there's two things I, that that's like racking my brain with F1 at the moment. It's I really want to know, even though they said they'll never release it. I really want to know what the fuck changed in the Ferrari engine to make it have no balls anymore, and. They used to have. I read uh, the article that said that they used to have 67 horsepower more than Mercedes mm. last year. But the yeah. thing is, by by and, and and you know again other articles that I read, and it, I think that I completely agree with them is that by by being faster and being sort of they haven't been disqualified last year, which leads me to believe that they were playing the rules but not really. Um, you know, completely outside the rules. Mm. So they were not in, you know, in violation of the rules completely. Um, but the thing is that they woke up a dragon. They woke up like a monster um, because Mercedes took that challenge up and then they created an engine that's even faster and yeah. within the rules. And they, they, I mean, completely. this year is they're completely unbeatable. So this year it's going to be Hamilton. I'm calling yeah. it right now. I think Bottas... Bottas just doesn't have that char- he doesn't have that that well actually I should say well he doesn't have that charisma he doesn't have that, that you know that 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 champion quality. Well, that and was the when funny... I say that I realized that Rosberg did win in 2016, but uh, for me Rosberg is also someone who doesn't have that quality. Who just I mean you know it just um, he he won the he didn't win the championship for me uh, I think uh, Hamilton lost it. Yeah, um, and he lost it, it mainly because of a problem of uh, mechanical issue. Yeah, where he lost the 25 points when he was ahead, and I don't remember the race exactly, but basically that that's where it was, and that, that's where he lost the the championship. But um, yeah, for I me, think, Ro- yeah, uh, Bottas I think could win it. I think I, I heard an interesting thing during FP2 where they were talking about Bottas, and Bottas seems to have a better knack for the tracks than Hamilton does. So by that, I mean Bottas, you'll notice in F free practice and, and everything like that, is consistently faster than Hamilton every time. Um, and, and I know Hamilton in FP1 very easily took, took you know, the top position in terms of time um, during FP1 after a, a few laps. But Bottas seems to just go out, know the track, and he's got it, right? Um, and I find that very interesting because, yeah, I don't know. I have nothing more to say other than that. And I thought that was a really interesting comment that Hamilton needs time on the circuit. And, you know, you could almost say that, okay, time on the circuit also means that, you know, through the race, Hamilton will learn the circuit better, learn the conditions. Uh, no, I but, think, uh, I think, but on, I think a, I, on a virgin circuit, Bottas seems to be quicker. I disagree with this statement. No, okay. I disagree with this because usually Hamilton is much faster than Bottas uh, in the rain. Um, okay. Consistently. And so, you know, the, when it rains, it's a constant uh, discovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, so you you're just looking for the racing line. Really. I think where where Hamilton really shines is the, is in his management of uh, the tires. He just it's just unbelievable. The tire management that he has uh, is just crazy. You saw it last year so many times when he was able to to take tires like way beyond their life and uh, and then still still actually even beyond their life being able to do the fastest lap of the race. Um, uh, that's 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 the way that's the way he is. Um, he's really really good at that. He's very very quick. He's very consistent, um, and it's that consistency that that shines over Bottas. So Bottas um, can probably be faster on a one lap, and uh, he's proven this by taking you know a few poles, um, but he cannot keep up with the consistency at that high level. So if the if 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 uh, you know the fastest that uh, Hamilton can do is 139s, you know, for 75 laps, um, maybe Bottas will be able to go into the 138.5. But the thing is, overall, he will not be able to keep that average mm. of 139s. So he'll mm. go into the 40s sometimes, and and that's what that's what is the difference, I believe, um, in the style. And and the thing is. Because Bottas really wants it as well, we can see in 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 some of the races, in some of the qualifying, in some of the that he makes mistakes because he's yeah. just pushing it. He's over driving himself, not the car, but himself, and that's where Hamilton is just such a consistent guy. And but at yeah, I mean you're right. I mean it's. I'm not trying to pick on Hamilton at all. I think he's a fantastic driver. He he really gets the job done every time. Oh, he, he bothers me a lot, but don't get me wrong. But, oh yeah. yeah, I mean, there's lots of things to be annoyed about him for. But I mean, as as a driver, are you, are you taking a are you taking a uh, leave of absence again? I am, I am, I am. But I'm listening. I'm listening. As a um as a driver, I mean, you know, Hamilton's come a long way. I think he's a lot more centered as a person as well. Um, we all know, like earlier on in his career, he had so many like public issues with, um, you know, his love life and things like that, and you could see it affecting him on circuit too. Um, and then, but then you look at like Bottas, who actually went through a divorce last year, and nobody even knew. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but but the thing was, we can't discount Bottas as anything but a pretty good driver. Like, I mean. I know he's in a good car. No, 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 don't get me wrong. He's a great driver. That's not what I'm saying. Um, but, you know, as Toto Wolf once put it, he's a good wingman. <laughs> I, I don't remember him saying that, but okay. Yeah, he said that um, a year or two ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he's the perfect wingman. When when actually Bottas was asked to uh, to leave way for, for, I think maybe 2018. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, don't, don't quote me on this one, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what you know, essentially happened um, because yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we ask of him, right? Yeah. Also, sure. is it, it, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but uh, he's the second, um, you know, he's the second driver in that team. Mm. You know, the car is built around the uh, Hamilton uh, Hamilton is the, uh, for some, uh, overpaid driver. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, this is the way it is. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, and he must have known it, you know, when he came from Williams, that he would be the second, second driver. And, I, you know, last year it was uh, Bottas 2.0 and I'm going to win everything. And and he did really well in Australia. He did uh, really well in, in a couple other races, you know, during the year. But uh, at the end of the day, he got smashed by Hamilton. Yeah, he did. I mean, yeah, it's like you said, yeah, you're right. I mean, he's a good wing man. So, but he's still a great driver. But I mean, he's a great driver. Don't get me wrong. Any, yeah, yeah. Anybody in F1 is a great driver anyway. There's no bad driver in F1. I, uh, I don't. I wouldn't say ever because yes, there's so many videos about the bad drivers. But um, uh, you know, um, when you look at uh, the the current grid, I think you know you can pretty much say that they're all great drivers. I mean, even Lance Stroll, who uh, who 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 brought innovation in F1. You know, 
because we used to have paid drivers. Now we have paid teams. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Buy the team. Sure. That's even, you know, like we talk about paid drivers, paid drivers. Now it's like, oh, Papa, uh, can you please buy the team for uh, me? I, I love that. It's like buy the team and then buy a car company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, it's uh, um, when you look at uh, Latifi as well, it comes from another very rich Canadian family, mm. apparently, that uh, that probably would be the one to inject more money into Williams. Um because Williams also needs money. But I mean, you know, when you look at all this, you're like, wow, that's innovation you know, right there. You know, what do we do? <laughs> that's a new, I don't know, it's a new business model, isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. It's uh, very interesting. And, uh, you know, a lot of people would sit there and say, that's a but, problem. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I look at it and I say, you know, I love the sport. And it looks like there's lots of motivated people in the world that want to see the sport thrive. And, you know, if we're bringing another manufac manufacturer into F1, then I'm all for it, you know. Like, I, I'm just like... Yeah, and I, you know, the, that budget cap that they're going to bring in as well, I hope is going to help, you know, having um, or uh, getting back to 22 cars on the grid. Um, you know, introduce to new teams, make it, you know, more attractive um, for yeah. other teams to, to come and join because at the end and, of the day, it's a celebration of motorsport, you know, you like F1 or you like NASCAR, I, you know, I like uh, WEC, I, I love all of those uh, events myself, I just mm. like, I just love racing, right, so um, the more the merrier, I guess, and uh, if you if you, if you you open it up a little more, okay, maybe we won't get, you know, the uh, the, the every year the the 0.5 seconds or one second faster but uh you know we we, got, we have to draw a line at some stage mm. no i agree i mean it's i think and the funny thing is mercedes is is really the team that's pushing hard for these budget caps and um you know i'm happy uh, that... really yeah they're the ones i that... think the hardest that are pushing are the mclarens the uh, racing point you know those teams that won't necessarily have you know, the means, the Williams and all of this, they're asking for the budget cap. I mean, for Mercedes, actually for the works team, you know, they kind of like, guys, budget cap is okay, but, you know, we have to actually invest in making all the parts of our cars. Um, whereas, you know, other other teams, you know, are able to buy already made parts in, in a way. Right, I'm just simplifying it. Yeah, here. I mean, I, I I was pretty sure that Mercedes was leading a lot of. Um, I'm pretty sure Mercedes was leading a lot of the discussions on that, but at the same time, you know, like I, I just put up an article right now, and uh, actually, I'll just share it with you now. It's um, and by the way, I've read literally none of it, so it could be all bullshit. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. But it's saying it may lead Mercedes to um, it may lead Mercedes to expand into other series. Yeah, of course. But that's 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 the case for uh, Ferrari. Said the same thing. Um, you know, you put a budget cap, so that means they cannot employ as many people. They cannot mm. have as many resources to do something, right? So they're like, we don't we don't want to fire anyone. And the reason why they say this is because he doesn't want anybody to feel scared for their job right now. Um, and quit the team. But um, the thing is, yeah, that basically that overflow of of cash or whatever, uh, the budget cap that they, uh, you know, they have to save, they're gonna have to, um, I mean, yeah, re rethink and 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 re uh, reassign those resources that they have that will then be too expensive for that budget cap. So. Uh, here, those teams and the work team have been very fast doing this, and and the reason the, why they've been so quick is because they want to keep their staff. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that's interesting. I mean, I, I, this is kind of on topic, but not. But this is a pretty humble statement from Toto Wolf saying, you know, I don't want to become a team principal that goes from great to good without realizing he may not be bringing or not adding as much as he did in the beginning. So I thought that's that's a pretty humbling statement. Yeah, it's um yeah. It's it's um yeah. Yeah, and I think I think Toto Wolf is really uh, one of the people in Formula 1 that are, you know, is my favorite um as in being really genuine. Um 
very very smart in his investment uh and and then i think i i don't know how good he is as a manager but definitely as a leader uh wow so yeah, he does a good job. yeah, uh, yeah he's, he's doing an incredible job uh so yeah really somebody inspiring and you know when you look the investments that he makes he's always has have always been around you know um he's invested in mclaren um he's invested in in, in many different right. things he's uh, he's putting his own time into you know the talents that he thinks are the best talents on the grid um so he's the manager for well, not direct manager. I, I'm not sure about uh, Russell, uh, but you know, definitely a big supporter of Russell, George Russell, um, and the manager of uh, Seb- uh, uh, Ocon, Esteban Ocon. Yeah, he's the manager of Esteban Ocon. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just um, yeah, just a great, um, great guy who loves racing. Who started with racing, they realized that he was not that good at it, or that he wouldn't be as good as he wanted to be with it, um, went into finance um, and uh, yeah, just did it such a great job. Um, mm. Then of, um, of uh, yeah, being, being a leader, I think it's just an unbelievable what he's doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens, you know, when he steps back from F1, you know, that'll be interesting. You know, yeah, maybe, but, uh, maybe, maybe uh, it's nothing uh, automotive at all, you know. So I think he he's really the tall Bernie Eccleston of uh, Formula One. I think he's never really going to retire unless somebody really pushes him out of it. Uh, but I don't see a reason why anybody would want to push him out. Whereas Bernie Eccleston, yes, <laughs> everybody yeah, was quite a quite everyone, a bit upset. That, a uh, lot yeah. of people were upset with Bernie Eccleston, but I mean. I mean, he was very much old school. He got he got to the point where what he was doing was not really aligning with what was happening. And what what's is it Liberty Media or something that bought F1? Liberty Media bought, yeah. it, uh, bought F1? I mean, but I think I think they're doing an alright job, you know. They're doing they're doing a good job, I think. Um, I think Bernie. I mean, again, all respect to him to bring F1 from where it was to where it is today, because it's all thanks to him, right? Mm. Uh, and, and of course, everybody around. But I mean, he was, you know, at the leading edge of this. So, um, but uh, yeah, no Liberty Media, they're doing a good job. I mean, you know, a lot of people criticize all the graphics that now we have during the race and all of that. And I, I'm like, yeah, they're not right, those graphics. And yeah, a lot of it is kind of, uh, you know, but they're really trying to introduce F1 also to the masses, you know, to the people who don't know F1. And, and yes, they need to, to know and understand, okay, um, that percentage of whatever, um, you know, fuel left or, or throttle or whatever, that's what people want to try and understand better because, because F1 is a, is very much oriented to geeks, you know? Yeah, it if is. You, if you change, if you change one millimeter on the front wing, your whole arrow is then gone. You know, it's that it's that technical in F1, and um, and um, yeah, no, I, I really like what they're doing. Are they doing it right? Is where maybe they need a bit of help and a bit of guidance and a, a bit of learning. You know, nobody can can be a hero overnight, but I think they're really doing a good job. And I would say also that uh, you know, again. During this exceptional, you know, period of time we're living, um, they've handled it, you know, as best they could. Yeah, I mean, they did that um, digital uh, F1 and stuff like that as well. You know, back to V. Well, not VR, but it was like, you know, hmm. some of them had pretty impressive rigs as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I think I think they really have done a good job. And the other thing as well is. Um, you know, I think it's it's more or less it's it's a in between transition ish sort of period of working out what what the hell what what's happening with the world right now. You know, but ultimately, you know, us as race fans, I think what Liberty Media does, you know, even even simple things like have you seen the way they they transcribe the radio messages on the screen. So you know what's being said. Yeah, I love this. I mean, like for me, I mean, not not being a native speaker, right? There's a lot of things that get lost, you know, like when there's engine noise or aero noise or braking or whatever. 
you know, like those sometimes are really hard to try and understand. And um, having them, you know, putting those little, you know, and non-invasive also. That's mm. what I like about this. You know, like non-invasive, um, you know, little message uh, transcri- transcriptions and everything. I, I I, I really think it's clever the way they do it, they're doing it. So I I, I don't I agree. mind it. Again, uh, you know, like when they did the tire wear and um, you know the tires, you know they have 15 laps left. They did this last year. It was it was really it was not good. But I'm not about saying that we should remove it. It's that you know guys make it a bit more precise, make it a bit more reliable um, in your predictions. But you know, That's the thing I really like about the World Endurance Championship, and you know what's funny, like World Endurance Championship has, you know, the decent graphics and things like that, so we can follow it quite easily, you know, short of what's act- the action happening. But, um, you know, I, I think the, there's a, I think the World Endurance Championship presenters, they're a bit geekier. You know, because and and this is probably talking a, to exciting to me and you as 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 pretty big. Like I wouldn't call myself like a race authority or anything, but I I like the information that they provide. Yeah. And in World Endurance Championship, they um, you know, particularly at Le Mans, where it's a twenty four hour race. I mean, um, you have some of the presenters that they'll sit there with a notepad and a calculator. And they're trying to calculate, okay, how many laps left until they run out of fuel and they need to come into a pit stop, you know, and they start looking at alternate strategies and things. And to me, I mean, that sort of stuff is really cool. You know, I I really like that. And I think whatever Liberty Media is doing in terms of, you know, getting more information on the screen. And like you said, without detracting from the actual, like... um, Yeah, they did well in that sense, you know. that the, 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 the The only other thing that I would have to ask is for the advertisers. Guys, give us some ads. I understand they're supporting it. I don't mind consuming ads, but don't stop the broadcast. Do it around the broadcast. So you do a smaller screen, you keep a screen there, right? Like, like we're doing right now. Yeah. So I can see a smaller you in your, you know, and then you do the ad all over. You can take over the sound if you like, but let me look at what the action is as well at the same time. And and you know, I would appreciate you more as a brand if you did this. I don't think that's got anything to do with um, Formula One, though. No, no, it I doesn't. That, it doesn't. I'm that's... just I'm talking to the advertisers yeah, around okay. it. And and the thing is, you know, Formula One lives from there, from, from this as well. Like they get revenue. I mean, the TV rights basically indirectly. Uh, so TV is getting the money; they can pay for being able to broadcast Formula One. So, just don't, please don't stop the broadcast. Yeah, that was the like we we spoke about this a while ago, but that was the worst thing about Australian broadcast. But it's in some before. countries in Australia, it's crazy. The race I just mean, stops, like in yeah, like, the race. Oh. I mean, in Australia, you have what an hour and a half race. You have like forty-five minutes of what you can see. The rest is all ads. No, oh, it's and, terrible, and it's man. mostly most ads that we don't care about, and we actually hate the bro- like the people who bring out the ads. We hate them for doing yeah. this. When I was in Australia, I remember the ads that were running most of the time were insurance and Mercedes was just advertising during. Yeah, the and then and then and what I, I don't, the I don't, hell? You know, I, I don't, mean, I, I don't care. You know, but you know, the funny thing is they double up the ad. It was really, it was really weird. Like they go. Uh, let's just say they assigned, you know, like three minutes of ad spots. They wouldn't have enough advertisers, so they'd just re. They'd have like the Mercedes ad, and then playing twice, and then yeah, they'd play it twice, but they'd have like the next ad, which was. I mean, come on, like guys, Sh- come Shannon's on. motor insurance or something like that, and then they'd run the Mercedes ad again, and you're like, yeah, we got it. Like, can you just put us back to the race? Well, don't name the brands because it works towards their, you know. They're gonna say yeah, but then he remembers it was Shannon Insurance. Yeah, and yeah, but I mean, these, these are, but the these thing are, is, but you know what? These, these are brands I, I was for familiar me, with. Uh, that makes me hate the brands. I, I really hate those brands because of doing this. I, I, okay. I, I hold them, you know, I hold them accountable for making me miss most of the race. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I just this is just it's disgusting. So just, just do it. I mean, again. I don't mind the ads. I, I like the ads. I mean, the reason why I consume and the reason why, you know, like a lot of people are like, uh, you know, like 
yeah, you lose privacy and everything. But you know, I prefer to have ads that are you know catered to me on the internet than ads that come out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, you know what the funny thing about all of this is? Um, I know, like now these days, um, I watch World Endurance Championship from the app, right? So I pay for the season pass, or sometimes some years I only pay for them all, and I can just watch it uninterrupted. And the great thing about that is because I've got Chromecasts on all my TV, I can just cast it to whichever TV I'm in. So it, it's not a problem. But the 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 um the funny thing, like I, I keep talking about Australia, it's kind of irrelevant now that we live in Asia. But the funny thing about that was for some reason, World Endurance Championship, they basically let it run uninterrupted. <laughs> oh really? And I, yeah, and I was just like, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know but the, the thing is the tv is killing itself doing this oh yeah it's just they're not um, so they, they should really rethink the way they do the business because they're really killing themselves doing we, this because you know one of the I, reasons why we watch you know netflix why we pay for netflix why we pay for you know those broadcasts and everything is because we know it's not going to be interrupted by fucking ads uh you know what though two points first point um I think it would be really cool if F1 streamed on Twitch. You know, the Amazon video game streaming service? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, that would be really cool because, I mean, they have a very simple payment method that you can go ahead. I know F1 does their thing. They have their own, the, right? Through the app. Yeah, they got yeah. the thing through the app. Uh, but, but I yeah, think you're, if you want right. to re reach a different audience, I think you'd be able to do that. But uh, then, yeah, it's like reinventing the wheel. Uh, why don't you get the best platform out there? Just just use that. Yeah. And, we'll be through that, yeah. Yeah, I mean that would because um, they don't want to share their revenue. You know, it's a question of money. Yeah. Um, if they have to to pay, I don't know, uh, Twitch, you know, twenty percent of the revenue. Um, that twenty percent of the revenue, you know, for the subscriptions, mm. actually, it means more. I mean, it's it's more money than for them to develop their own app. So that's the way they look at it. Yeah. Ooh. But um, I mean, I agree, but at the same time putting it on another platform it's like putting it on a different tv channel and you're, you're cutting yourself some audience I, I i fully agree with you but they you know when you present to shareholders you're presenting a pnl or like you're presenting a you know an excel file they're yeah. not showing those shareholders they only look at uh you know tangible yeah but see the revenue. other not, the not other, intangible the other thing to they consider the other, the other thing to consider as well is uh, i mean Liberty Media is a much bigger company like, as far as like they, they do a lot outside of F1 as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what and one of the thing um one of the things um sorry outside motorsport. And one of the things I always thought is you know clearly they they must clearly have a good idea of what demographics are doing. They've purchased F1 because it has some sort of prestige and they want it on their as, platform. as their platform, you know. Yeah. But what exactly, you know, is there a risk of the audience disappearing? And when we say at risk of disappearing, is it is it you know is it um, not that they're leaving? It's just is anybody new coming in? And that's that's the yeah, thought. But the, the, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, why don't you do multiple platforms? You know, right? So that's, that's what I'm saying. You do, that's yeah, what exactly. Saying, you know? So why don't you do Twitch and YouTube and your own platform if you think that's the one, and then. You'll see how that you know everything goes. But the thing is, they they think cannibalization. You know, they think uh, I'm going to cannibalize my own platform if I if I open it to other platforms. And um, yeah, I don't want to feed the dragon. Yeah. Um, and that I, is, the other thing as well is because at the end of the day, when you're Liberty Media, right? As you said, they have multiple, let's say, markets that they're trying to advertise, right? Mm. So at the end of the day, um, they see YouTube and Twitch as a competitor because they're they're broadcasting entertainment. So yeah, and that's but... what it is. And, you know, at the end of the day, so they're like, why why should I feed the dragon? Um, they don't see it really as a platform. They see it as a, a creator of content or or a, a creator of uh, yeah entertainment. That um, that but, uh, yeah. I look at Twitch. Like for me, Twitch is not a a, a creator of anything. Twitch is a platform. They're that a platform. People, yes. You know, and people. But the thing people... is, 
because they allow people to create their own, you know, um, yeah. content. They, it's also it's also in a way, and I, I I think that's the way they see it. They see it as a competitor. The and, same thing with YouTube. You know, but the thing is with Twitch. I mean, Twitch is all about interaction, right? So, um, I don't necessarily think if they were to go into something like a streaming platform to actually run their races, I don't think that they should. I mean, I naturally I think it's going to be locked off. I think they're going to require some sort of subscription, you know, tier one to five or whatever it is on Twitch that you have access to the stream. But, you know, if I was to do it, I would not have, you know, um, David Coulthard and, and co commentating. I would actually have somebody younger and relevant to that audience commentating. Jimmy Broadman. Yeah, but like, you know, but that knows the platform knows how to, you know, like to record this podcast, I, I run a dual computer setup, right? Which is basically here I'm, I'm talking to you and here I'm, I'm recording and, you know, one day, who knows, we might stream on Twitch, you know, or we stream on YouTube or and wherever. here you hear voices. Yeah, but it could be that, you know, I'm, we, we, there's actually audience interaction that we're responding to and you need oh, somebody that, that one, yeah. yeah and you need somebody that's adept or, or a team whatever that they'll, they'll run a team that it won't be one person but they'll run a team of somebody that's be able to go back and forth between the race and what the audience interaction is as well you know so i think you know that's that's the uh the interesting um and and that causes its own complexities, but I think that's going to be a really interesting on a, a really interesting. Um, I mean, that would be a really interesting concept for me because at the same time we're we're in an an age where you know combustion engines are very slowly disappearing. Um, you know, we're in an age where you know people are moving away from traditional. The rotary media. is back, motherfucker. <laughs> I heard about that, yeah. But you you know what I mean. No, like it's, it's not it's, back. It's, it's not back. It's and, not and, back. It's uh, speculations, but yeah. But how do you how do you attract a new order? And I definitely believe video games is definitely one of them. I mean we I, I can't remember the streamer's name, but the guy that does all the um the online racing and stuff like that, and he's got a pretty pretty great rig going on. But you oh, know, Broadband is a good one. I think I think that's the one. Yeah, yeah. But um you know, it, the to, first to, time I to, sent him to you, like about about a year ago, you said, "Yeah, very gay." But um, yeah, you know why? You know, you know why? Because he is the ultimate nerd. But there was nothing happening in the stream that was keeping me interested. That was the problem. And you know why? Because I was not competitively racing online. I was just playing against AI, um, and I was That's not. Right. I was not at the level where I was, you know, analyzing a race at that point. I was jumping into a race, even online, very much for fun, you know. And, yes. And Let I, me kick your ass online. So that's what we need to build. You need to build your rig in Indonesia, my rig in Thailand, and I'll kick your ass. Well, speaking of, speaking of okay, we're going back to VR games. And there are so, three tracks. No, no, there, there are three tracks. Three tracks. So this is something that I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm quite interested in. And, you know, we were, we were bitching and moaning about online advertising, but this is something that caught my eye as somebody that lives in a, you know, not a huge apartment, but, you know, um, you know, a little apartment. This looks like something that is doable in an apartment. And they've got a few different configurations. <laughs> Sounds like you had butts. This is something that's doable. This is some. <laughs> no, it's not something. It, it becomes someone, not something. But oh, you sorry. Can, you can run. Excuse, excuse my French. <laughs> but you can run. You can see that they've actually got you know a base configuration and then sort of like a VR configuration. Oh well, a racing configuration. You can just run a VR thing into it. Yeah. But this this particular product, and you can see it actually folds away quite nicely. Mm. You know, I mean. This is a product that interests me. And I remember I, I had that seat in Australia that I showed you um, that interested me very much, uh, well, that I liked because it was like a, a racing seat that you could fold up. It was like a it was like a, like a a deck chair like you'd see at a resort. 
but you know they had it it was shaped like a race seat more like it but it would fold up and you know that was good for me because i could put it away but this is another one that seems even more slimline and cut down and something that we could do and and definitely i mean if you, if if you get your shit into gear sort yourself out with and i don't know i know what you're like i mean you're you're going to try and spec yourself up a pretty high spec computer but even if you just get a basic computer you don't spend you know too much money on it i think we could do some cool you know live stream racing with 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 setups as simple as this you know with a vr headset yeah definitely and um i i, I want to do this but the thing is um yeah I need to everything you know all those things you know even though you know it's 250 usd or whatever um in thailand is is either doesn't have it or it's twice the price so well, i'm i'm in the same like... i'm in the same boat i i can't get that here without having to pay at least 30 40% import tax on top of that but if we're looking so that's at the thing. that's if the only problem because but this is something that's pretty interesting and it's uh, i'll be honest it looks quite elegant but to look at something at like 350 USD um they're saying the retail price is 600 so what's that 800 well actually 8 million IDR here um i think that that's worth it but that thing that's 250 USD when you look at it right did you have to pay what 800 well i'm saying 800 as the as the conversion after USD so well 600 is their um retail oh you mean with all the accessories and everything okay 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 yeah Got so you. Yeah. you could probably spend let, let's let's be i'm going to forget my um pc cuz that was 33 million idr here which is probably the, like... the the problem is that again you know like for the people who are listening you know uh shukran shukran means thank you in uh, arabic um <laughs> but um the thing is um you know like when when you buy when you see the price online right from thailand let's say 250 usd right yeah. so you import it that sort of thing you will get about what 35 to 40% tax right because they'll consider it as furniture so let's say best case I mean, scenario the only okay, thing for, i've got, let's say 40% tax. Tax. i mean wait 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 wait, wait. Okay, okay. 40% tax is $100 so it's $350 right yeah and then The thing is they'll want to do their margin. So then from 350 they'll bring it to 700. And the reason why they bring it to 700 is because when in uh, Europe or in the US you have one in 100,000 people wanting to buy it, here you have one in 10 million people who would want to buy it. So you'll sell six. So no no sorry sorry. Uh, are you saying the company wants margin or who who wants the margin? No, the people locally. So they will import it. Ah, uh, okay. They will get 40% tax, right? Which is going to be $100. So $250 for just the the the, the you know, the, the chair itself, right? Okay. Um 40%. So $100 on top. So 350 is their cost of goods, right? For them, they will at least sell it double that price, so $700 just the chair because the thing is that you have to realize that they don't have let's say you pay a space to sell something in Europe or in Australia you will have 10 people interested or well, let's say 100 people interested right mm. in Thailand you will have one person interested but mm. you'll pay the same price for the space so that's why they they take The, the margins here are just insane from the resellers. But what if you did it yourself? Then you don't have to have that. And double. you can do it yourself, yeah. but then you have to deal with the customs. And uh, dealing with the customs, you know, I bought a pair of um, a Nike's 180. I love the Nike's 180, right? Um, and I, I I bought a pair of those. A um, hundred? No, sorry. Uh, Hundred and ten dollars USD. Um, I was. It's funny because uh, that was actually what I was going to say. I was going to say I know you like your your Air Jordans, so I was like, well, how do you deal with it? 
when you're buying. Yeah, but Air my Jordan. Air Jordans, I like them so much that I don't wear them, you know, all the time. So I, I've yeah, got some okay. other shoes as well, you know, as casual shoes. So my my just my Nike Air One Eighties, I love them, you know, white, nice. Um, so I I bought them a hundred and ten dollars, I think it was, or oh, eighty dollars, eighty dollars, sorry, eighty dollars. And then by the time I imported them, they were a hundred and seventy dollars. More than because double, okay. the yeah, tax, yeah. but the tax they put on the shoes and the transport. You get taxed on the transport. You get taxed on UPS or whatever they charge you to bring those shoes to you. Really? It's fucking insane. Completely insane. Seriously. I'm so pissed off with this. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm not buying anything here. I'm not importing anything in Thailand. I mean, all other than my job, you know what I'm doing. But the thing is, I'm not importing goods. You know, when I want to buy shoes or something like this, send them to Singapore. Yeah. No tax. Yeah. Then I pick I, them up there. And and as you can see, I I like playing music as well. So it's the same here. There's actually one store very, very near my apartment um, called High End Guitar that I'm okay buying equipment with because they're selling at a realistic price. But they only sell the high end stuff. But there's even little bits of equipment that I want to buy. I actually there's there's all this equipment that I've bought that is actually sitting in Australia unopened in boxes because when COVID finishes, I can go there and pick it up. Because, yeah. you know, it's cheaper for me to actually just get on a plane and go to Australia yeah. that's, than it that's is what's to insane. import it. It's imported here, you know. That's what's insane. You know, it's the same thing. I know the like the PS5 will come out. It's going to be $500 or whatever, mm. USD. Um, in Thailand, I can tell you when it, they bring it the first time, it's going to be $2,000. Yeah. Well, that's why I bought a gaming PC. Like here, my only console is a Nintendo Switch, right? So I play that and, you know, I, and on the switch, I play it casually. I, it's actually in my bedroom, right? Which is on the other side of this wall. And, um, you know, I just play like whatever, but I'm playing like, you know, Assassin's Creed, Civilization Six, uh, Wolfenstein, but I'm playing them very late, but that's okay for me because it's casual gaming where it's, when it's something more like, you know, more intense, that's why I bought this, this laptop. It's, um, so I can play that, but even that, like, I mean, 33 million is what, 27, 2800 USD for this laptop in, in Indonesia. Yeah. You know, but again, you know, I chose laptop over desktop because I like, I mean, to be fair, Julian, I mean, you've, you like porn in the toilet, like everyone. <laughs> no, I don't. Let's be honest. But I do, I do like traveling, you know, and I tend to come to yeah. you more than you come to me. So to be out of this throw, like, I yeah, but I, that's because I have that aura, you know. Mm. Like, don't make people think that uh, you no, know. But I'm it's being look, it's, it's it's the life which I am, but it's yeah. it's the life that I chose, right? Yeah, yeah. The life that I chose is that most of my friends live away from me, so my entire yeah, you chose a fancy boyfriend. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but my um, entire music recording setup, I can throw in my backpack with a gaming laptop, you know. So that's that's the way I've 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 basically done it. That I can throw everything I have into a backpack and go somewhere. And that's the sort of the philosophy that I've since I left Australia. It's the philosophy I've sort of lived by: is have everything as portable as possible to get the best results. So, so I mean, you leave Australia, by the way. Um, so. I'm let's glad you about, did. But I mean, uh, let's since, talk about this for a second. It's Are since, you happy? Um, yeah, with... since 2012, the first time I went to Asia, right? I was just like, I've got to get out of Australia. <laughs> I just don't like. Like, I look at the, I look at the world around me in Asia, and I'm just like, it's, it's better for me, for my lifestyle. It's better, mm. you know. And you know, yes, there's difficulties in things like. You know, if I want to buy any Google products, you can't buy them here. They're not officially available. Hmm. So I have to import them and do all the stupid tax shit that we've been talking about. But, you know, to live in Asia for me is ideal. You know, it's, um, you know, yes, there's difficulties in some areas, but... So you're still, uh, you're still happy with being here and you can still see the, you know, the way forward, I would say. Yeah, uh, definitely. Like for me, um, and 
you know, professionally speaking, I've worked in the market since 2012. <clears throat> so it's about eight years. I've been traveling through the region for a long time. I now live in Indonesia and I understand Indonesia, the best out of all of them. But to be moving around um, is not exactly going to be uh, uh, difficult for me. But, you know, the reality is, um, you know, I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. I'm I'm happy living in Asia. Um, you know, it's like to me, it's it's I, I wanted to get away from Australia. And if if somebody was to lure me back to Australia, <laughs> I know this is going to sound very selfish, but they better be putting a lot of money on the table because there's not a lot that's going to be dragging me back there. You know, short of like you know just the visit. No, it's, a, it's yeah. I mean, the money is the opportunity as well. I mean, usually it goes with the money, by the way. But uh, let's say yeah. if the, if they give you in in your company, if they give you the you know like the they put you in charge of the head, you know, at the head of Australia, you're like, mm, oh hi, wow, what a challenge. So, you know, we 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 work by challenge, I think, more than by money. Um, well, yeah. I mean, you and me have a very as far as like leaders are concerned we don't have a very different mindset there yeah but we are very motivated people to excel we want the challenge you know mm. we'll we'll take i will gladly take inconvenience just to prove that i can do something yeah yeah you know? that's the thing yeah you know that's and, the thing. Oh. and with with my hobbies like like music and gaming the whole point is like technology has allowed me to be able to you know play music in at least uh, you right. left fucking Sorry, in your hobbies. Yeah, but I mean that's a hobby wherever I. Do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not that good at. Yeah, okay, okay. No, I need I need to do it like very frequently, so I make sure I'm at a particular level. Yeah, you need practice <laughs> from what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> I, I need I need to keep you happy, right? I mean, you're you're the one I'm trying to please. Hey. <laughs> I'm the Euro trash, right? So the Euro trash. I love that. You know, I love yeah. I love that we just go, yeah, Euro trash. I don't care. And I like <laughs> I, I, I embrace it. I mean, come on. Yeah. That gives me rights to a lot of things. And you I know, know I, like, I, I, I have... it gives me an excuse for anything I do. Yeah, I'm sorry, and... yeah, I'm a Euro trash. <laughs> yeah, I understand. And that's but where you know I... what? Why why not try this? You know, why not try the try it in the ass, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but you know like for me personally like you know speaking of your trash that's that's where i get to be like i get to have a bit of fun because i'm ethnically ambiguous people go oh you're a white guy or you're european <laughs> you're ambiguous you're... on your best days man so ah, yes. i know people 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 cannot tell i mean everywhere i go everyone here thinks i'm middle east and it's 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 quite funny so I just go, all right, whatever you reckon. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you're in a Muslim country, so they're used to, you know, um, yeah, Middle East, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Eastern, uh, you know, uh, kind of tourism or something like this. Yeah, place. yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I mean, they all head off to, um, where is it, Mecca during Ramadan. And... Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess, yeah, that's what they know also in Indonesia, probably as, you know, foreigners. But you know, unlike um, that's that's the thing I always get the shock about. I was it, like trying to remind myself. Any other Asian country I go to, um, there's a lot of expats. Particularly in Thailand, there's a lot of expats. You know, well more than I'm used to. Whereas in Indonesia, it's very hey, rare. not that many. Yeah. yeah, it's very rare. So yeah, I'm um, an oddity, and because I'm like quite tall as well, people are like you know, and with such a small dick. That's what pants are for, my friend. That's the oddity. <laughs> that, that's, that's the oddity. <laughs> Man, yeah. you seem to score on every. <laughs> <laughs> just, just pick, just pick a, a category. Yeah, cock size. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you seem to score on every one of them, higher or lower. But as yeah. we we're saying, ambiguous. Yes. You, don't know, you don't know until you try, do you? Exactly. <laughs> I've tried and uh, I like the trip. Yeah. So, um, should we continue on where we left off last week? Oh, man. Which no. is... um, I, I, we should go soon anyway. Um, but, um, you know, the, the, the one thing is I just wanted to show everybody this, this picture. 
it's me. <laughs> yes. Did you have that lined up just for the <laughs> podcast? <laughs> I just think this is the like such, you know. Okay, when I when I see this picture, I really miss our time together, like yeah. uh, going out and all of that. Um, you know that COVID is yeah. We we need to find a virtual way to get drunk together, um, make it an app, and uh, you know become mil- billionaires. Um, <laughs> because come on, seriously. Um, those times I just miss, you know, like, uh, yeah, I, I really, I really miss it as well. And that's one of the things that's what prompted us to start the podcast. And like I said last yeah. week, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that's can... the way we got digital now, but yeah. we're not dancing. We're not, you know, yeah, but I'm really looking forward to being able to bring my gear and we actually just record a podcast live, you know, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah, we will, you know, we will. Oh, you know, I had that uh, 25 push-up for 25 days challenge that actually designated you for doing as well, but you didn't do shit. But uh, don't worry, because nobody did shit actually about anybody that I actually designated. So, um, but I, I, and I didn't do it, but uh, at some stage I wanted to do the, okay, for this 25 push-up challenge, you need a, an accessory. And uh, here is my accessory, an RX-7. And do the push up from the RX7. All right. Uh, so I haven't done this, but uh, yeah. I think when when I'm over there next time, yeah, we have to make sure there's a lot of shenanigans. So we're gonna we're gonna make sure. So from this particular podcast, we've decided there's gonna be some sort of like VR racing podcast. Hopefully, yeah. Well, if not we podcast, can, yeah. live stream. Yeah, if we can. There's gonna be what else is there gonna be? Hmm. Fitness challenges, because we're amateur racers and have have a bit of a fitness kick. Yeah, I really wonder how we can compare because we have like very different bodies. Yeah. Um. So you know, if it comes to push-ups, I don't know. Um. But I can tell you that I can do because I did this yesterday. Uh, maximum push-ups in one minute. Yeah. Um, okay, we can try that. Which is fifty-three. Okay. So um, yeah, I already, I don't know. I, I already, I already <laughs> have is, like, you know, like my my body weight is different than yours. Like you're so massive, right? So I already, I already like have different. I already have something very unorthodox on how we can measure that. Yeah, but I don't take it in the ass, man. I have told you so many times. I know no, you've tried. No, 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 no. It's not that. Your, uh-huh. wife, your wife won't be happy though. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'll fill you okay. in after the podcast. No, yeah. don't fill me in. I said I don't take it in the ass. <laughs> uh, but, uh... <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I, I'm sure we'll think of some fun things, and I'm sure a lot of the people on the on the channel, all four of them, at the moment, subscribed. <laughs> uh, and I think I'm one of them on my other. On my other, so maybe it's three. Um, I think it's going to, I think, um, you know, uh, I came twice. (laughs) Sorry, not on stream, but uh... (laughs) what today or like, (laughs) oh, no, 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 no. Today, maybe. uh, Yeah. I don't know. So should, should we just quickly finish going through that editor's pick of cars we did uh, last week? Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Let's do this. All right. I'll pull this up now. Give me a second while I navigate. Oh, yeah, you actually, froze, man. Hang on. I can see you freeze. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Ah. I cannot see anything. Is it then? It is there, but it's a uh, so, small window. Oh, sorry. For all those wondering, we use GridFam to actually uh, chat. How's that? I love the chat. So you know, sh- chat chat means pussy in French. I've been uh, telling you uh, and uh, teaching you a lot of French words today. It's brilliant. I'm probably yeah, gonna so, forget. So uh, I love the chat. Oh, okay. Bush is lips, right? <sighs> Here we go. Uh, Bush is uh, yeah. Bush is mouth, actually. All right. So where do we pick up from? So we had like. We skipped SUVs, didn't we? 
Oh. Yeah, because come on, who wants one? If you like cars, I mean, yeah, they're great and blah blah blah. But I mean, we're not talking about the car that you want to live with uh, as a daily driver, right? We're talking about cars that we'd love to. Yeah. All right. Fuck these cars. Actually, we do too. Yeah, SUVs are good too. I mean, I, I have an SUV. All right, let's have a look at, uh, okay, compact car, compact. We already did that last week. This has been updated since the last podcast. So, sports compact, Civic Type R. Uh, uh, there's no <laughs> Renault in there. This is US, man. All right, hang on. Let me. I'll... I want the Renault, man. I'm going to go with the Megan RS. Yeah, that, that, that actually, that extreme, because money is no matter. Right, so All I'll right. go with the, the 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 one that has the current record for front wheel drives uh, uh, drive at the track time on the Nurburgring. All right, hang on, let me have a look. So top cars, I'm going to type Euro because that's realistically what's relevant. We don't live in the US. Okay, well if we look at this, okay, Golf GTI. Oh my God, this is a, such a shitty list. It's all just literally a list. Okay, um, you can only see. Hang on. You can only see one screen. All right. It's back to me now. Oh, my God. I, I liked it better before. <laughs> uh, Europe's best-selling cars, top 100 cars for 2020, best-selling cars in Europe so far. I'll okay. go for the Golf GTI. I mean, mine is the default choice. It's just the best car. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is getting tedious. Okay. Top 100 cars for 2020. All right, here we go. I'm going to I'm going to show you this. Yeah, be better prepared next time, no? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm so shooting you, man. Thank it you. It seems like the BMW 3 series is the top choice for 2020. For crushing into a wall. Well, it says the oh, Irish. Man, I, I look at this. It's the wagon. Yeah. All right. I uh, desperately need to go for a pee, so you're going to have to carry the podcast for another 10 minutes. Okay. So you, you see what's on the screen now, and you comment on everything. Yeah, but I cannot scroll down. You should. You need to just, pee fast, yeah? yeah? Yeah, I'll pee fast. You've got seven cars to critique. Um. So, yeah, straight away, I would go for the wagon, you know, like for the BMW 3 Series. I think that's the one that looks the best. And, you know, of course, wagons look best. Uh, the Jaguar I-Pace looks good right now in fifth position on the bottom left. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's actually a lot bigger than what the picture looks like. So, pff, no. The Kia e -Soul, if, it, it, it's minus Soul. I mean, you know, just, just drop dead if you want to buy this. Um, Toyota Corolla, okay, if you don't like cars, but then again, you're not listening to me if you don't like cars, but again, drop dead. Um, the Tesla Model uh, 3, sorry. Um, yeah, they seem to have a bit of quality issues from what I've read, but uh, I think they're good looking or good looking, you know, enough. Or a daily driver, um, and definitely the performance is there. So I'd probably go for um, yeah, nothing like the Tesla. I'd still stay with the BMW 3 Series wagon. Um, what else is there? The Skoda Superb. <laughs> I, I, hey guys, I don't know what you think, but Superb turd is what comes to mind. Um, prove that you don't need an SUV in your life. Come on. They're just trying to say that their car is better than an SUV in every way. They're trying to get the hype of the SUV to buy, to sell their car, basically. Uh, come on. Um, get out of here. The Audi e-tron. Yeah. Same thing. I mean... That reminds me of the old road, which was all catastrophe. Um, so no, out of all those cars, I'd still go with the BMW 3 Series, hopefully in a manual What was catastrophe uh, about the e-tron? Well, e-tron... Sorry, the all-road. 
Uh, the, 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 the reliability. It was. Oh, really? It was just. It was just one of the worst cars from Audi in terms of reliability and and then maintenance. Um, I've th- look. It, I, I've just got to make one comment. Um, your comment on the Model Three. Yes, they had some reliability problems. As a techie, if we're talking about, you know, I'm very much considering at what stage of my life will I need a Model Three. Um, through Asia, I don't think I'm, I'll really need it unless I lived in Singapore or Hong Kong. But I do really like the features, like can I take my hands off the wheel and let the car drive itself? And as no, a but pet- you, you cannot in our countries. No, That's no, no, you, you cannot. In, you in, cannot. in a country like Singapore and Hong Kong, you can do this because it's like very defined lanes and everything. But our our countries, they're always working on the roads. There's always, you know, the the the, the lanes and all of that, lane markings and all of that. It it, it won't work. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I completely agree there. But I th- I think as a car, in in very organized Western or any country that has a very organized and strict road rules, I think this is a kind of car that's that's going to interest a lot agreed. of people. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I think Again, the, I, I did say that it was a nice car. I didn't yeah, say yeah. that. Uh, yeah, but I, w- I wouldn't go for it. Yeah, I think the I Pace is a nice car. I know Richard Porter. It's huge, though. No, no, you're thinking of the F Pace. So the I Pace, ah. the I Pace is small. It's it's like the Model Y, you know. Um, but it's an electric car. I think it's a good car. Um, but you know, it's like again, a nice doggy style position pace, you know. See, the like problem this, is like this, like this, like this, like this. But doggy style works for you because you're not as tall as me. You have no. Oh, yeah. I have to do construction to do doggy style because I need okay, I need to prop you up with pillows and all this other. You bullshit. end up digging the wall. Yeah, fuck that. So yeah, that's free, the I've I'm bored. Um, uh, again, there's... again, no. Sorry, if we're talking about the uh, the style, I'm sorry, but I do like the Mazda's style, like the new, their you know design style, expression, whatever you want to call it, is quite nice. No, I don't disagree. It look good. Uh, you know, like it, as a daily, I would probably very much consider Mazda if I lived in Australia. In the US, it would be very different because cars are so cheap. Um, you know, but when we're talking Asia, mm-hmm. I don't see a need for it. If we're talking the Mercedes-Benz E-Class uh, wagon, which is number nine, I would say, yeah, that's a, uh, I, I, I could go that. I mean, you've I got for the win, man. I mean, you've got the E-Class 300 hybrid or something. No, like the C C C C C. I'm oh, not that rich. That's right. So you've got the C-Class um, wagon hybrid, which mm-hmm. is I. You took me for a ride in it, and I was really impressed. So I, I have nothing more to say. It's nice, like the the torque and everything is very nice with that car. Yeah, so I I, I quite like that car. Toyota Camry for Asia is wonderful. For any Western country, I think the Camry has really caught up technology-wise. Toyota was very slow in adopting a lot of technologies. Um, you know, even just basic, I would call things like CarPlay and Android Auto as necessities in, in 2020. Um, but it's all there now. So I would say, yep, this is definitely... Let oh, me I'm... say something, though, about the Corolla. Mm-hmm. The Corolla that we get... The Corolla the... or the Camry? Oh, the Camry, sorry. The Camry yeah. that we get. There's another Camry that we can get. Explain. We get the 2.5 liter hybrid. You oh, can really? get, you can get in uh, Europe and uh, especially in the US, the three liter, above three hundred um, kilowatts car that will do a zero to sixteen like five or six seconds. It's ridiculous. In the US. Yeah. Wow, my McGann wasn't even doing that. Hmm. It's insane. The, the the Camry went to like like insane levels of um, performance. Um, so if I could get my hands on this, I'd have this here. But okay. um, Let, let's let's rush through the list. My, and then previous, when car, my previous car was, was a 2.5 liter hybrid. Yeah, I and, like uh, it. I really it like was enough car. to be uh, driven around in. That was a good car. 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to just rush through the list. So the Peugeot 5008, get a life. Uh, the Audi A6 Avant Estate, yes. The Hyundai mm. Kona, get a life. The Toyota CHR, very funky, um, could do with a bit more technology. Range Rover Evoque is ugly. I don't care what anybody fucking says. The Range Rover Evoque, if you look <laughs> at it, if, if you look at it from behind, there is so many, like, like if you look at the panels, there's so many panels just converging in the rear of the car. I just go, fuck it. It's ugly. I don't, I don't give a shit what anybody says. It's an ugly car. Well, pick it in, then. Ford Focus. Well, yeah. It's a Ford Focus. Oh yeah. Skoda Octavia. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. Lexus UX. Yeah. If you really want a Lexus and not spend, not get the full size, go for I the mean, UX. I mean, come on. I mean, again, have a look at people who are looking for those cars rather than the way. If it's the way we like them, then continue scrolling down because. Yeah, but look, the UX, right, is the kind of car I would have looked at when I was in Australia. Okay. But I'm not the in UX, Australia. Which, which one? The UX. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, I'm not in Australia. It's very likely that I could be anywhere in the world. Same, same for you. And if I look at the UX, it's not at the top of any list. It's at the top of my shit list. Okay. But if we're talking about good list, it's probably a good car. But why would okay, you, if, you're looking, point. Okay. if you're looking yeah. at a UX, buy an IS because the IS is way more stylish than this small crossover with a Lexus badge. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Santa Fe, don't care. CX30, good car. It's going to sell a lot. Say it, L A Tecker. I don't know. I don't have no experience with Say it. C Class. I don't care what anybody says. The C Class is always going to win. Yeah, just remove uh, uh, remove the A Class CLA. Just just sort that segment out. Keep yeah. the C Class where it is. The C Class is good. The new Rav Four is the most disgusting looking car I've seen in a long time. It looks a bit weird in that picture, yeah? It's fucking disgusting. Look at it. They're like uh, They went from something that was blended into the environment to, holy shit, I want to vomit. And that's the result. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mazda 6 Premium, I have no opinions. Lexus LC, I would happily buy one. With real money, S class, I would happily buy one with real money. Always. Not, not uh, when I say real money, I mean the money in my bank account. Yeah. Not just, you know, hypothetical money. The Golf. Yeah. yeah I I'm, mean, you, you can't you can't beat it. The Fiesta. But you have to choose, you just have to choose the model um, that fits you. But the thing is, the range of uh, engine options and everything fits everybody. You know, you mm-hmm. want to be economical, you want to be a bit electric. more sporty, um, you want to be electric, everything. Everything yep. is there available for you, and it's uh, it's such a good all-rounder yep. in terms okay. of, uh, you know, baggage space, passengers, um, uh, driving dynamics. All of this is just so blended into that one car yep. um, for that size. It's so yep. great. Yeah. Okay. Ford Fiesta. I actually owned a WS Fiesta Z-Tech. Which is the previous generation? Uh, sorry, two generations ago. Great car. Um, at the time, had more tech than anybody else. I think that car really pushed that segment forward. And I would say, even if you're not getting an ST, I know the ST is not available in the US, but the rest of the world, uh, it's 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 a it's worth buying. You know, Ford is a big company. Um, you know, the design has come a long way. The equipment has come a long way. I would say, yep, the Fiesta, if you're not going to buy any sort of Volkswagen product, the Fiesta is should be your next option, option in that segment. Um, look, look at Reynolds, though. You know what? I'm, I'm going to just scroll through this list and see what's what. The i3, too old. Um, Renaults are not appearing in this list so far. VI8, yeah, man. Yeah, I know, but where is it? I've lost it. 
You yeah. Know, you know. Did you see that they put a V8 in the I8 for a Formula E? I love that. I love it. Yeah. I mean, this is a so very boring counterproductive list. and you know, in what everything they're doing, but it's nice. Well, the eight couldn't... series, the eight series. I saw an eight series in there. there yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. What more can I say? I saw one for the f the only time I've seen an eight series was in Singapore because you know that's the only other country that sells them around here. Mm. That car is gorgeous. What a car! That car is gorgeous. Um, Citroen. The Volvos. So many cars I don't care about here. Alpha the Junior. Volvo. Look at that Volvo. Which 72, one? man. 72. Oh, yeah. The S90 and V90. Yeah, oh, okay. Such a handsome car. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I saw something. Uh, an Alfa Romeo in 77. Mm -hmm. The Julia. Yeah, I'd like to, yeah, fucking defend. Everyone, bit, everyone bitches and moans about the quality and issues they've had. They've probably fixed them by now, but, you know, I think the Julia is a, is, is a good car. Who cares? Who cares? Seriously, yeah. they're so good looking. The A7 is a great car. Um, Renault Clio, always a good car. Oh, where's the Clio? Here, yeah, 84. Even even not they an look RS. Now. Yeah, yeah, not even yeah. an RS. Just the, the regular one is is great. I was just like um, rolling over that uh, Jaguar XF in the eighty nine. Hmm. Is it actually available as a a shooting brake or not? Yeah. Wonderful. That's a nice car. Supra, of course. I'm gonna say yes. X3 and X5. In Thailand, I'm going to say no because they're so expensive. Mm. X3 but and X5 are reasonable here. And uh, no, no, not for me. Okay. Supra is not reasonable here. It's more than double the price here to most other countries. Yeah. Same. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, number 100 Ford S Max. Uh, get a life. Uh, Continental GT. I'm going to go to sleep. Okay. I, I think I've got to say the Bentley Continental GT is a beautiful car. Yeah, what is it doing here? And um, there's so many cars m m missing. Like the, um, I wanted to see the Alpine Renault. Yeah, I don't know what this This is the best selling cars. This is the Irish Times. But this is the All best right. selling cars in 2020. And it's funny that a Bentley made it onto the list. Oh, and, okay. and you know what? Yeah, the amazing. Bentley Continental GT. I uh, like genuinely. I would love to own a Bentley. Honestly, I would. I. I really. If if we're talking about aspirational cars, a Bentley is definitely a car for me. I. I love them. I think they're sporty. I think they're elegant. You know. I think. You know. Um, you know. I, I don't know. They, they they've got prestige. Not that I care about prestige, but there's. Something about the quality. Yeah, but I, I guess it's different from, you know, you buy the equivalent uh, Mercedes. It's not mainstream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So and... you've got something a bit, you know, you know, like, okay, I'm going out the norm here. But again, you know, in our countries, going out of the norm is just so expensive. Uh, not in terms of buying price only, but also in terms of, you know, the maintenance and everything. Because... You know, those guys, they maybe have maybe what, five to ten cars in the country. So the technicians are not able to really maintain them. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a real problem. So they have to bring someone from the headquarters. So then, you know, your, your, anything that needs to be done on those cars is not only the, the labor and everything, but it's the flight and the, right now the quarantine and the hotel and everything. Yeah, I don't know, but I don't know that people are driving around that much at the moment. Yeah, but those cars, it's not about the, you know, it's like uh, either you do uh, 30,000 kilometers or it's one year maintenance, right? So at the end, it's the same thing. You, you still have to maintain those cars. And uh, even if you don't have to right now, you will have to. And 
that's what is my you know a bit of a uh, that's why my my default choice will go back to will be back to a Porsche and not the exceptional like a uh, oh, rare breed Porsche. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I'll go for a Turbo S, for example. You know, you know that's funny. Speaking, if we're looking at 911s, right? I mean, I I really like the Caymans, the current generation Caymans, but the the Carrera S right now for me would be the sweet spot. Yeah, Some, it probably is. Something has happened. Turbo, they've, Turbo S, you yeah. know. I mean, the Carrera S, I look at it and I go, fuck, they've really, they, they've would, worked yeah. magic with that, you know. The, the problem is maintenance. So you just look at the mainstream one, you go for that one, because that's, that's not, we can't afford more than this. I mean, again. Yeah. I mean, again, here, you know, in, in, in Australia, it's probably, I mean, I you're definitely the only person in the world I would happily go 50-50 in cars with. In Australia, it's doable. Here, we have very good support for Porsche in Indonesia, but still the price is very high. So Yeah, you know, the labor, because the labor in our countries is slower than any other countries, but when it comes, when it comes to specialized labor, it's, it's twice the price. Yeah. Very yeah. easily. Um, very true because it's because because yeah you, you've got one guy in the country be able able to maintain your car and uh, that guy is trained you know maybe two or three times a, a year um, and mm. and it's, there's just not that mass it's not a mass market you know mm. so but yeah but anyway um, how about for the podcast uh, you know we call it there I think I think this is um, unlike other podcasts where we're giving a shit to each other the whole way through i think this is a podcast where we really covered some topics you know so it was, it was um, oh i didn't give you shit enough okay uh not that for the next one that's all right we have our uh, our our outtakes you know yeah that's good <laughs> yeah okay so for everybody at home if you like this please like share subscribe um it's or don't uh, or don't you know, it doesn't matter because I'm still going to pick up my bottle of wine every Saturday and I'm going to drink with Julian. Yes, um, exactly. That's the point. It's all about cheers. this. Cheers, my if friend. If you want to join the party, please come with us and uh, we're more than happy to uh, include you in. But uh, there's no stress. But we also encourage you to get involved. Like, please, like if there's something that we said that was wrong, which I'm sure that there was a lot of, get involved and tell us because, I mean, we'd love to yeah. at least have a bit of back and forth. And we're quite it, opinionated. Yeah, even so. though this isn't live at the moment because I'd really like to do it live. Um, but, you know... Yeah, uh, but we need, I, we need to find the right time. and I, I need to organize this a bit more. That's all right. We, we've got schedules and, you know, you've got family and things to deal with. Yeah, so. family is the thing. But, uh, yeah, no, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, we, we, we definitely can. Yeah, the yeah. thing is, if we if we really organize a good time for it, it's going to be probably Sunday mornings. Okay. Oh, um, right but country. let's say uh, 9 a.m. Yeah. But then, uh, then we're not going to have drinks at 9 a.m., right? So... Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> speak that's, for yourself. <laughs> okay. No, but seriously, um, I'm very happy with this podcast. It's it's, it's I'm having a lot of fun. I don't. Yeah, care well, about we are anyway. That's yeah. and that's what it's all about. So, yeah, the yeah. rest doesn't matter. Uh, like, subscribe, unlike, unsubscribe, whatever. Dislike, we don't care. I I, I don't think we can have negative uh, subscribes. So unsubscribes, guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to change anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. It's highly likely that Julian and I will continue, but enjoy your weekend, guys. Oh, actually, no, we yeah. post this on Mondays. So enjoy your week. I hope this uh, you know, gives you a bit of joy and controversial opinion for your week. Yeah, and uh, joy. See you, everybody.